So here's an update. I have built uh, most of the case. As you can see, I have three sides done on it. And most of the major parts are installed. The laser head, as you can see, is installed. It is bolted in there. As you can see those bolts right there. And what else do we have here? The laser galvo drivers are installed as well right there, which power the mirrors. And you can see the laser drivers themselves. Uh, those are all installed down in there, kind of a shadow on them. And there's a big heat sink right there. And the fan is going to directly cool that heat sink, as you can see. And there's another fan right over here. And as you can see, all the components have also been installed. And I still have to do all the soldering and connections in there to make everything work. But uh, everything is getting very close to being finished. Here's a back view of the entire laser unit. As you can see, I have everything drilled out, all the major plugs and components installed in there. So you can see the two cooling fans, obviously. And you can see the DMX plugs in and out right there, as well as there's the main AC plug down there, and there is the interlock key, safety interlock. Down there is the DMX selector, and those two are the ILDA inputs and outputs for the computer. So overall, everything is mounted in there and looks pretty good. And I should have this done probably in another day or two. So looking good. So here's a closer look at the heat sink. As you can see, I have it labeled uh, red, green, and blue up there on top for where the gavel drivers are there in the back side, as you can see. And this heat sink is doing very, very well. It seems to be doing its job. As you can see, the fan is blowing up against it right there. Let's try this angle here. And as you can see, it blows right down the side of it. So it keeps those uh, pretty cool. So I am almost completed with everything here. As you can see, there is a mess of wires on there now. Everything is hooked up. Uh, the wires are not bundled up yet, obviously, but I did test it last night just to make sure that everything did work as it did in the previous videos. And everything is working just fine. And as you can see, where I have everything mounted there, um, once again, you know, there's the laser head, there's the Galvo drivers, there's the uh, laser drivers, and there's the main power supply, and underneath all that mess of wires right there is the ILDA board, or the show board, and there's the Galvo driver power supply. So everything's a pretty tight fit in here. And that's the way I wanted it. The cooling on here works very, very well from what I've already seen. I put my hand over here on that heat sink, and everything was running very, very cool. So that fan was doing very well back there. Here's the 99% completed laser unit. All the wires have been zip tied, plugged in, and tested and ready to go. This laser is 100% fully functional. All I have to do now is put the black plastic cover on top, glue it down, and it's completely done. So let's talk about some of the improvements that were made on this laser compared to my last two. Obviously the laser head. I uh, did a lot of work on that. All the mounts are adjustable, which is very nice for alignment. It makes alignment a breeze. The cooling system is brand new on this one. I put two cooling fans in as well as a large heat sink for the laser drivers. The cooling fan on the right is blowing air in, where the cooling fan on the left is actually blowing air out, which helps circulate the air inside the cabin, as well as it's blowing air directly against uh, that large heat sink. Now you're looking at some of the inputs and outputs on the back of the device. As you can see, those two shiny ones are the ILDA inputs and outputs. And what is ILDA? International Laser Design Association. That is a communication standard that your computer uses to talk to the laser. And that's what does all the fancy work that you see during laser shows right there. It is a DB25 plug. This is a computer plug that has 25 pins in it. And you can find it in any electronics store. Since computers are digital and this laser is analog controlled, you must have a digital to analog converter in between the two, hence a DAC as they're called. Now I chose to go the more expensive route by buying this nice one here, however you can build them a little bit cheaper, I've seen that done before. But what you must take note of is that the DAC is what makes or break your show. So for example, if you were to project a circle or a square or some kind of shape, that's what the output looks like and not all distorted. 
What you're looking at now is a DMX inputs and outputs up above there. That is what allows the laser show card and a DMX controller to communicate with each other. The laser show card, as you saw before, is just a circuit board that has a bunch of pre-programmed laser patterns on it, and you can manipulate those patterns by use of a DMX controller with up to 14 channels on this one. It's kind of neat to play with, but still kind of limited compared to ILDA. Below that is the power input and the laser safety interlock key. Now the laser will not work without that key being in and engaged. It has to be in the on position. Once it is on the on position, you cannot pull the key out. That is another required safety feature, so someone can't activate it and run off with the key. Another safety feature is that it has a seven second delay. Once you engage it, it takes seven seconds before any light can be output. So that way, if you were to leave the laser in the on position and then plug the power in, you won't get any unexpected laser light output blinding somebody. Here's a view of the top of the laser after I've put on some required warning labels that are required here in the United States. Now here in the United States, we have to comply with certain rules, and one of them is, is a CDRH compliance, the Center for Devices and Radiological Health. That states that we have to have the labeling as you see there, we have to have the safety interlock features, we have to have the darkened box so laser light can't leak out unexpectedly, the seven second delay that I have on there, that is all part of the CDRH compliance. Now this is a class four laser, that means that this laser puts out more than 500 milliwatts. Now they're not concerned how much power is coming out of just the aperture, but they want to know how much power is coming out of it total. So any light leakage they could be concerned about. And here's a front view of the laser there with the warning label on there notifying you that that's where the aperture is and there's a laser beam, so watch out.